This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning's courses are easy to navigate, and their structure is much more straightforward than traditional training programs. Try it for yourself, and then bring the whole team along. For individuals, use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT Pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash twit. Last week, the entire tech press community lost its collective mind over the news generated by a hacker that KeePass was insecure and that it was possible to obtain the KeePass master password and thus everything else that it was protecting. InfoSecurity Magazine's headline was KeePass Flaw Exposes Master Passwords. Well, that doesn't sound good. The Hacker News reported under the headline KeePass Exploit Allows Attackers to Recover Master Passwords from Memory. SC Magazine said KeePass bug lets attackers extract the master password from memory. And actually, they had by far the coolest graphic, which I put in the show notes. Uh, TechTarget wrote, KeePass vulnerability enables master password theft. Uh, Anonymania, passwords at risk. Major KeePass flaw unearthed. <laughs> TechRadar, this top password manager apparently has a major security flaw that could spill all your logins. And finally, HelpNet Security, KeePass flaw allows retrieval of master password. Proof of concept is public. Uh-oh. Okay. So here's the one and only thing that this podcast's well-informed listeners need to know. It's an entirely local attack. In other words, newsflash, if your machine has malware running amok, it's not safe to use a password manager. <laughs> no. <laughs> Any password manager. Right. You know, not just KeyPass. Right. But by the very nature of what any password manager is and needs to do, no password manager is safe from local attack. And they don't try to be because it's a fool's errand. Recall how almost all commercial video DVDs, DVDs were encrypted to prevent the theft of their contents. But DVD players were fundamentally unable to keep their keys secret because they needed to use them in order to decrypt the DVDs. <laughs> it, was, it was so dumb. <laughs> It's an ana it's an exactly analogous way a, in an exactly analogous way a password manager that's going to f fill in blank username and password fields must have access to that password's ma that password manager's decrypted password database even if you set it up in an annoying way to require you to provide the master password each and every time you use it it would still briefly need to decrypt and read the master database to obtain the required password. The reason we were so upset with LastPass was not over something like this, which, as I said, is an inherent design point for any client-side password manager. We got upset with LastPass because they lost everyone's encrypted data all at once, and then we learned that a lot of it had never been encrypted and that what what was encrypted might not have been very well encrypted. KeePass is a popular, free, and open-source password manager. I don't use it, but I know from Twitter that some of our listeners do. Most of them, I would to... hope, use KeePass XC, which is not, yes. by the way, vulnerable to this. this it is, is, it, is, it yeah. is a fork of, yeah. of, that is not vulnerable. So you have to imagine that KeePass's lead developer, Dominic Reichel, who has recently been attacked from every angle, has got to be asking himself about now <laughs> why he's been working <sighs> so long and hard Sad. on this currently thankless project. We do not treat our open source developers very well, do we? No. no. So here are some details to give everyone some sense for what's going on in this particular case. The issue affects the software's custom text box control, which is used for entering the master password and other passwords during editing. For the, and it's called KeePass 2.x Master Password Dumper, 
proof of concept tool to work, you need some access to the system RAM through a system RAM snapshot. So on a Windows machine, that would be the process dump, uh, the page file.sys swap file, the, the hyper file.sys hibernation file, or a RAM dump of the entire system. The researcher whose work has generated so much clickbait said, quote, the flaw exploited here is that for every character typed, a leftover string is created in memory. Because of how .NET works, it is nearly impossible to get rid of it once it gets created, unquote. So this sounds like a case where a developer using a very high-level language framework, .NET, is being betrayed by the low-level way some of the language environment functions behind the scenes. In this case, the environment's automatic string management. It wasn't really meant for implementing super secure systems, at least not without giving it extra explicit thought. There's just too much automatic stuff happening in the background. You know how when entering a password in iOS, the most recent character typed can be seen for confirmation, while all previous characters are blanked out with a round bullet character. It appears that this is what KeyPass does, but that the custom control that its author initially created is discarding each of the intermediate strings, which leaves them floating around in RAM. The exploits developer said, quote, for example, when the password password is typed, it will result in these leftover strings, a bullet and an A, which is the, the second character, and then two bullets and an S, three bullets and an S, four bullets and a W, five bullets and an O, six bullets and an R, seven bullets and a D. He says the proof of concept application searches the RAM memory dump for these patterns and offers a likely password character for each position in the password, except for the first character, which is not available. The vulnerability affects the KeyPass 2.x branch for Windows and possibly for Linux and Mac OS. It has been fixed in the test versions of KeyPass version 2.54, whose official release is expected in two months in July. Presumably, in this updated release, Dominic is no longer using intermediate strings, or he's blanking the intermediate string before releasing its storage back to the environment so that released strings will not contain any sensitive information. But stepping back from the details, the broader lesson here is to always keep a secure system's security model in mind. There are things that the model provides and things that it doesn't. The security model for a password manager is security and protection across the network. No one acting remotely should be able to obtain any secret information. In return for using a password manager, impossible to remember or even enter passwords can be used to provide today's highest generally available level of security for remote network logon, but only from across the network. Password managers do not protect themselves against local attacks, and they really cannot because users demand operating systems that are fundamentally insecure. A truly secure operating system is no fun to use because you really can't get any work done, <laughs> right? You spend all of your time manually authorizing the system to do anything you want. For a long time, users were running with root privileges because they'd grown tired of always needing to log off of their low privilege account and log back on as a root administrator to install a program. Then having, they'd have to switch back again. Microsoft finally developed Windows Split Token UAC, right? The user account control system, which minimizes the grief 
of normally running as a user who only has safe permissions. It is a terrific compromise. So, yay. But anyway, anyone was, I mean, I was just astonished by the amount of, of nonsense headlines that was generated by this. And poor old Dominic, I mean, he was quoted all over the place saying, this is not a problem. This is like, you know, everybody else does it. And it's the reason he's not rushing out like some emergency update. He's saying, uh, it's fine, and I'll be releasing this in July. So everybody take a break. You know, you don't want malware on your computer. If you've got it, don't use anything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> get rid of the malware. And- 